Hey guys, welcome back to my channel if you're already a subscriber and welcome if you're new here. My name is Natasha Vilaseka and I am a LinkedIn consultant. Now, today's video was actually going to be something completely different and then just before I started filming, I was like, no, no, <laughs> I need to speak about this instead, which is the new connection request limit. It is 100 per week, so 400 per month. This is something that LinkedIn actually started rolling out last year in November, I believe, but I think this month all users have seen it take effect on their accounts. It used to be basically basically unlimited up to a point. You would get marked as kind of like using like a bot or like spamming people if you're doing like a ridiculously high volume. However, there wasn't a cap until now. People are panicking. A lot of people that use automation bots, um, different tools to manage their outgoing connection requests at quite a high rate, a high level, are now panicking. Um, and people wondering, okay, well, what does this mean for outbound? Like, how can we, what are we gonna do now? Like, what is the answer to this problem? I think it, personally, it's a great thing. I think it's a really good thing. I think it's gonna mean that there is less spam. The quality of outgoing connection requests is gonna be much higher. And that's only going to lead to better relationships and forcing users to adopt a buyer first selling approach, which is keeping the buyer in mind, giving value before you directly just send someone a really long, cold sales pitch. I'll actually do another video on the buyer first principles, which LinkedIn has like a whole um, presentation on. So maybe I'll do that as the next video. However, I just wanted to address this topic today. What should you do? If you're using a, a bot, um, obviously this is against LinkedIn's user guidelines. It's not something that I recommend to people. I don't use a bot personally. I do it all manually. A lot of my a lot of my leads are inbound. Like I don't really do much outbound anymore, to be honest. Like I test it on behalf of my clients, but a lot of the leads come to me, which is I'm like in a fortunate position for that to be the case. What I would say is don't use a bot i would hire a va i know this depends on like if like your budgets like how much money you have if you really do want to use a bot you're gonna have to obviously lower the frequency um to like 20 per day if you're doing it five days per week so you've got 100 through monday to friday that's 400 over the over the course of the month i would hold back from automating the entire messaging sequence if you're going to try automate anything just the connection request anything past that i think you should have like you as a human having that conversation if you have the means if you have the budget then consider hiring a va if you don't have the time to manage your account personally have someone on your behalf manage reach out to people have real conversations and use like templates based off like what you've given them if you've got like training documents and sop like a training manual anything like that a VA is the way forward if you want to scale and you don't want to spend the time managing your account yourself. Second thing is this means that you can focus more on an inbound lead generation, inbound marketing strategy. So inbound versus outbound, I've covered this like multiple times, so I'm not going to go into it all now because you can watch previous video. However, outbound is obviously you're reaching out to prospects. A lot of it might be through like paid advertising. It could be that you're sending, you're doing like traditional methods of outreach, like cold calling, cold email, X, Y, Z, or like adopting the multi-tunnel approach. Inbound, where people come to you, this tends to be centered around the content that you put out. So it's nurturing content, which is helping guide the prospect towards making a buyer decision. This is really good with, like I love inbound. I think inbound is, really powerful yeah I, I prefer inbound but it depends on your business it depends on the size of your company the size of your market what your goals are what your offer is competition so many different variables personally inbound is good because people are coming to you when they're ready to buy they're most likely comparing your service your product your offering to competitors so other providers in the space similar to you and then they're using your content um, your presence online, they're stalking you, they're stalking these other companies and then they're coming to you when they've made the decision and it's off their own back, they've made that decision to come to you so they're in a position where they are ready to buy or they're open to exploring that possibility whereas cold is a lot about timing, it's a much more direct approach it can be very very effective um, for certain companies, I do a combination of, of both, like I do outbound 
and inbound. Whereas I think with this new connection limit, having an inbound strategy is gonna be much more important. If you haven't already set one up, this is a time when you, when you need to really consider it. What is the content that you're putting out? How are you nurturing prospects? What can you be putting out onto your company page or your personal pages to help establish you as a thought leader or your company as a leader within the space in terms of what you offer? enabling people to find you more easily so whether that's like through seo keyword ranking and also seeing that through your content you guys are awesome at what you do and you're a good option versus somebody else so this way you're not just relying on okay we've got 400 people we can reach out to a month and that's it you've got 400 people that you can reach out to per month with a more personalized approach where you're taking into account each person so in order to increase the chance that they're going to accept your connection request you can go and engage with their content. You can employ the ECCC method, which is what I use and what I teach about, and you can do it this way. So I think this is a really good thing. I wouldn't panic. I would focus on personalization and setting up a inbound marketing approach. So I know this is like kind of like a short video, but I just wanted to jump on and kind of calm people's minds because I've had a lot of people reaching out about this. I'll actually put... Now I'll do two videos this week. I will record the buyer first principles and upload that to my channel on Friday. So I'll put this one up tonight or tomorrow. And then I'll do how you can adopt a buyer first approach on my channel also this week. So you can kind of take that and that's gonna help you adopt a personalized approach, giving value, like all those kinds of things in that video. So take a deep breath. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up please leave a nice comment if you're feeling generous. And as, as always, leave your video requests down in the comments below. Aside from that, hope you've all had a great day. How's my day been? Um, I ordered a bubble tea and I put no straw by accident, so I've been eating it with a spoon, which is great. But aside from that, I'm doing good. And I will see you guys in my video on Friday.